the the killer in deals isn't the really the cost. It's the time it takes to deploy something that's a elegant and a solution that people say this is an intelligent chatbot, and that's the game changer because be, because before it would take too long to get something that was an intelligent enough to go meet that meet that standard. Synthesia. Healthcare turns out, Bill, is a pretty big segment of the economy. I, I just last time I checked, it was significant. Yes, it's about twenty percent of the national gross product. So it's uh, pretty amazing. It is pretty amazing, and interestingly enough, generative AI has a big role to play there. And you've been doing this from a conversational perspective for years. You're doing more in generative. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you have to show today. Looking forward to it. So. Orbit is a conversational AI platform that we're used in healthcare. And so today what we're going to do is talk about how is generative AI actually transforming the patient journey? So what's the problem? So the, the problem, if you went to a provider healthcare website today, you'd be presented with three different types of search bars, a search bar that's global, the search bar for location, the search bar that's doing finding a doctor. Challenge is depending upon what you type in, you're not likely to get the results or get navigated to care the way that you should. So what generative AI has done with, with us, we've built a generative AI pipeline that's using to actually extract entities and actually direct care to the user as well as ed educate the patient. So you can imagine somebody comes to the search bar and they type in something that's not a location, not a provider, but they type in something like, when is visiting hours? So here's where we're using generative AI to build a generative AI answer box. So if you go to any healthcare website, I think if you went to 20 of them, you would find that if you ask this question, when is visiting hours, 15 of those 20 would fail. And that's because they're, they're based on keyword search. They're not based on cognitive search, which the bottom of this screen is actually a cognitive search results. But that being said, the advantage Gen of AI has is that it actually understands the meaning of what someone's asking and then directs them, finds the content that's relevant to them and presents that to them. And so in this example, what you're seeing is that I need to find a female foot doctor who speaks Spanish. So this is an interesting problem with generative AI and with our NLP entity pipeline is that one, we provide the definition and generative AI is providing that definition of what a podiatrist does, which is a foot doctor. And then what you see is that the, the patient is being brought to different care options. So in healthcare, you can't really see a specialist without getting referrals. So that's why we're helping them to direct that. But you'll notice that the bottom part of the page, so we're using the, the, the generative AI natural language pipeline to actually formulate all of the information that we need. And then we're actually passing it to Elasticsearch. So recently you might've heard that OpenAI just announced functions, which is gonna make generative AI really, really powerful because it's great to use AI for certain things and it's great to use other tools for another. And this is an instance of using another tool where Elasticsearch is being used, where you're passing the language Spanish, the specialty of the doctor being podiatry and that the gender is female, and you're able to filter down onto the search results. Another example here, if I said I have pink eye, again, the, and the, the national language processor is actually understanding that that is actually conjunctivitis. But in this case, we're going to location search because the primary thing that people do when they have pink eye is actually drive them to urgent care. So the next concept here is that how easy generative AI has transformed it is to put a chap on a website. So when you would think about all of the content that's required to put content on a website, it usually would take months in the past. With generative AI, we literally can do it in minutes to hours, but no more than a day where we would we would actually, um, so it's, it's important to actually understand what's happening here. So what's happening is that when we wanna put a chat on, on your site for call deflection, just to answer questions and get people directed to, the, to something, what we would do is we're gonna ingest your entire website. 
We're likely with ingest your PDF documents that are used by the call center or call agents to answer questions. And so what we ingest this, we break these up into basically content blocks, which get converted into vectors. So this is a vector database, and this is part of, of OpenAI's solution where these vectors contain the meaning of what's happening in that block of content. So that when the when the patient asks a question like where's your office, that's converted into vectors, which is a, what they call an embedding, and we return back the documents that are associated with it. And then we're having OpenAI answer the question. So answer the question based on the context below. If the question can't be answered using the information provided, answer, I don't know. So in healthcare, we just can't let Gen AI just answer the question. We literally are using valid content sources, in this case, the healthcare's website or their PDF documents for their, uh, for their agents. But what happens with analytics is that you see there's questions that you don't answer. It's, it, this solution is fantastic of answering questions when it has the content. When it doesn't have the content, we then use this knowledge base that we used to use as the fallback. So instead of this being the main way that you would create all the facts that would answer a question, which would be hundreds of them, maybe even thousands, you this is now the the you're using your existing content and you're this is the exception where you're using some content. So another thing that happens in with managing that journey is you're you're often escalating up to a live agent. When you escalate to a live agent, you're you're asking you, um, the person's probably navigated across the site to do a number of things. So we use Gen AI to actually take the transcript of what the patient has done and summarize that. So when the agent starts to interact with them, they don't have to look through the transcript, which is what they had to do before. It summarizes what is this patient trying to accomplish. Then when the patient asks a question, we then use that same Gen AI answering system to basically answer questions that the patient might have to assist the agent to make it faster for them for answering questions. And then when the conversation is over, we take the transcript from when the agent started to interact with the patient and summarize that so that they can store that as a record into the electronic health record system. Again, automating the process of, of uh, what was the call about. Instead of them typing that all in, it's all automated. And literally, there's an educational process where the agent also can be improved by looking at the transcript and saying, how could the agent have done something better? And so when you look at analytics, so a conversation AI platform always has had analytics. The challenge is, is that when you look at something like, what are people asking for questions? They might be asking the same question in just different ways. The, the advantage that Gen AI has is that it can actually look at that information and understand this is all part of the same meaning. So stack that information together so that you get a more accurate response of what people are asking for. And then you actually will have more actionable insights into what you need to go do and address as a, as a solution. And then when you look at outreach where you're having a patient that after you're, you might be like a colonoscopy that a patient might have to have. You need to do an outreach to them to try to get them into the program. And you use Gen AI to actually do A-B testing of changing from one, depending upon the context, like maybe it's an older person, you might, Gen AI could do A-B testing to find out which converts better. So that's that piece. Let's go look at a little bit of a demonstration. Okay, so so here's here is a like a, what would be the example of an example find care on a health site. This would be like the global search bar that you would see, and I would type in like I have a terrible tummy ache, and so I could navigate to care by clicking on any one of these, except that the patient might not know what kind of care should they should they do? So when they actually click on this, this is where we're helping the patient understand that a terrible tummy ache probably implies an emergency room. And so here you're in a location 
search where you're showing that emergency is the facet of the of the health systems that are coming back and it will help you to find the, the, the nearest one to you. Another example of this is if I said I have, I think I have COPD. So, so in here, you, you see that it understands that that's what this is. It gives you the definition. You notice that it gives you a find care using symptom checking, and it understands that find a specialist would require that you see a pulmonology for, for that particular thing. And notice that you have all the facets here of how you might want to filter down. So if you pick a filter, for instance, and say, I want uh, that, you're gonna get the you know people that speak Spanish. And you can see that in the health system, there's something like 5,000 uh, to, to 10,000 doctors. So that it's it's not practical to have Gen AI know all of the doctors that are in your system because you don't have that context of doing it. So that's why it integrates really well with those. And um, the one last thing I'll show you here is like an, an example of when you say, I have a cough, C-O-U-G. And in here, so a cough um, at this point is you're, you're getting the answer, but notice that you, you can say find using symptom triage. And so this way you're, you're using another AI model, but in this case, to date, it's not Gen AI because in healthcare, we have to make sure that when we walk through the model, we're, we're, we need to make sure that it's, it's validated. And so in this particular case, we can't use uh, Gen AI, but it's a you know 10 step symptom checker to get people to more accurate care. So with that, I'm going to open it up to questions. Hey, Bill, that was great. So you've been doing this a long time, and a lot of us will be familiar with natural language understanding, you know, NLU or NLP-based systems. And you're talking about large language models. What's the difference? I mean, you've been doing this a long time. When you saw LLMs, you're like, oh, geez, like not good, no. good, like what is going on? Because so often the LLMs are actually better than the NLU models that we've optimized over many years. So the, the challenge with the, the, the having an intent-based, slot-based model, of course, is just the amount of work that it takes to create all of the training data. If, you, if, if we look at building a question and answers that have like 800 facts in it, that's 800 questions that you have to create training data for, where we literally could take a entire Mayo Clinic or some large health systems website has unbelievable amount of healthcare content and less than a few hours, it's it's not only is it, it would it have more than the 800 to 1,000 facts, it literally gets to the content that when somebody asks a question, the a Gen AI knows how to summarize it. And we don't have to worry about the content block size. We, you know, before when you're creating those questions, you have to make it work well with a chatbot experience. So that's a big, big, big difference uh, with with Gen AI. It speeds up time to delivery is just a dramatic change now. Okay, so that's that's really interesting too. I mean, so I, I think a lot of folks when they started seeing Chat GPT and started learning about confabulations, hallucinations, the the tendency to make things up, which when you're talking about money or health, there are special rules associated yeah. with those. Uh, they were like, oh, well, healthcare is going to be one of the last places this shows up. But you're showing that it's like showing up already. No, it's it's definitely, I, it's the way you use it that's important. It's the way, that the fact that we're uh, using it to answer based on your own content like like it could be health wise content or it could be Mayo Clinic's content or someone's content that's when the questions and answers are being used, we can use that to to answer the, those questions correctly today. And then there's a lots of things that you can use Gen AI, like for example, in all of those definitions that you've seen. So it's actually great in in answering those kinds of, of questions. And then you have a healthcare, when you have healthcare people on our team that scan it to make sure they don't see anything that looks uh, crazy. And honestly, it's been with since chat GPT-4, it's fantastic. 
Yeah. So we think about also this other thing or another point that I think is significant is Orbita has done a lot of work with voice and you've done a lot of more, more recently with chat. When we move into the generative space, is it everyone's all back to chat or no, are they trying no. to use voice with it? In fact, we've been doing some actually work with Whisper right now where videos that are being used in healthcare, how do you, when somebody types in a question, how do you actually have the video go right to that location? And that's definitely, we've already prototyped and already have that working. But even the, the concept of a voice conversation where you're interacting with voice and you need to get an answer, what we're seeing right now with GPT is that the, there is a bit of a delay, and that delay does affect answering a question when you're on a phone. But what we've seen in just the last two months, three months, the time has gone down to uh, being like 13 seconds to get an answer to now it's it's down on the average of about one and a half to two seconds, and it's just going to continue to get faster. I think we're in this age where technology like NVIDIA and other technology is changing the game so fast and allowing the performance to to go to increase so fast that we should be planning on more voice experiences and it'll become uh, easier for people to interact because people don't like delays but that that's going to be possible so are you deploying everywhere you're doing this with customers are you deploying a vector database like a custom vector database with yeah it's it's integrated into our into our platform. Got it. And do you deploy a new vector database for every customer? So, so there's techniques that you can use where you actually use like metadata that says how do you break this data up, so that so if you have a client that's using an instance of the vector database, you don't have to have a new vector database for every client. And there's like limits to the number of pieces of content that you can put in the vector database, but that limits is high, like 500,000 records or something like that. You have to be careful about the information you take in or how you handle the information that's being entered into the system? So we we always have to consider PHI when we're, when we're dealing with things. And this AI technology that we use around PHI so that we're not putting any PHI inside of these like vector databases for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so last question as we wrap up. You've been doing this a number of years. You had Orbita pre-pandemic, Orbita pandemic, and now we're post-pandemic and we're also post-GPT. Uh, how are things changed? Well, I, I honestly, when... November 30th came, GPP 3.5, for anyone that was building a conversational AI platform, this was an enormous game changer. It meant that we could do things that we couldn't do before. And so the, the killer in deals isn't the, really the cost. It's the time it takes to deploy something that's a elegant and a solution that people say, this is an intelligent chatbot. And that's the game changer because be, because before it would take too long to get something that was intelligent enough to go meet that meet that standard. Yeah, and I think also it it's it's really changed a lot about what's going on with the medical community is that they went through this process where all of a sudden they had to just act and it wasn't all about delay, delay, delay. Yeah. It was like in it seems like there's just more receptivity to talk about new things than there were maybe five years ago. I I think People are educated that AI is real, and we have to thank ChatGPT that people would type in something and, and be amazed. And they're like, oh, maybe this stuff actually can be human-like as, well, as to answer questions and answers and navigate people through workflow. Healthcare is an industry that is, unfortunately, there is so much workflow and there's not enough people to go and do the things that we need to do. You finally have something that can personalize the experience to every patient, which ultimately is going to bring better care to patients in the, around the world. That's awesome. And folks, uh, Bill Rogers, he's actually one of the thought leaders in the space thinking about generative AI 
with healthcare. So I know he showed a bunch of different demos. Those are also, those are very interesting. If you're in the healthcare industry, you might want to just reach out to him directly too, just to talk about what you're trying to accomplish, because I think he has good advice even beyond the products. Thanks. All right. Thank you very much, Bill. Thanks, Never Brett. Check out more of it Synthedia, out. the business and technology of generative AI. Generative AI, synthetic media, large language models, image generators, virtual humans, voice clones, deep fakes, chat GPT, and more. 